Hey everyone, Dan here from Veteran Athlete, and if you're like me, you grew up watching He-Man and Thundercats on a Saturday morning on TV, you were dying to go for a ride in kit, and you actually had to knock on a front door to see if your friend wanted to come out to play. And on the way to becoming a 30, 40 something, you lifted a few bits of iron and you ran a few miles, and you might now be at the point where you realize your body isn't quite as resilient as it once was, you're not quite recovering in between sessions like you used to, and actually that program you followed when you were 23 no longer makes you, it just breaks you. Now myself and Ryan created Veteran Athlete because we made the mistake of jumping onto Google and typing in how to train in your 30s, 40s and 50s. And what we found was just a load of articles written by people in their early 20s telling people in their 40s how they should train. Articles which span the spectrum of forget your age, just plow on through injuries, bury your head, push hard, keep going, and when you're driving down the road and that loud bang goes off, know that it's not your exhaust, it's your left shoulder falling off. All the way across to just corrective exercise hell. Don't touch a barbell because your spine will turn to dust. Don't ever lunge, your knees will just collapse. Oh, and jump on a cross trainer for 20 minutes, five days a week while drinking three liters of apple cider vinegar. So we set up Veteran Athlete and we created the team program. And what we're going to do today is we're going to walk you through a full week of our team program workouts. Uh, this is week 15 and we're going to provide a little bit of a rationale behind the exercise selection, why we've set the program up the way that we have and what you could expect to get out of it if you were to sign up. So when we set about creating the team program, it had to match a few criteria. It had to have some strength component in it, it had to have some hypertrophy or muscle building component in it, there had to be some conditioning work, there had to be some mobility work interwoven within the program because there's nothing either Ryan or myself hate than seeing someone having an illicit affair with a foam roller or a band for 30, 40 minutes before they even lift a weight. And it needed to be fun whilst respecting people's injuries and battle scars because we've all left the gym knowing that we've done something that we're gonna feel the next day. So we need to reduce the risk of injury while still keeping training fun and allowing you to progress. So let's take a look at what these workouts actually look like. So here we have workout A and you can see that we kick off with a strength superset of close grip bench press and dumbbell bent over row. So close grip bench press is a great option for those who struggle with a standard bench press or have shoulder issues which stop them from doing a normal bench press. And a bent over row is a great horizontal pulling movement. So if you do tend to suffer with shoulder issues, then try increasing the amount of horizontal pulling exercises that you have in your program, even go in two or three exercises to every push exercise that you have in there. And you can see there from the reps that we start off with a 10, it's sort of a pyramid setup, and the last two sets are meant to be around about a four to a five RP, an RP scale of one to five, five being an all out effort. And what we find is by keeping the overall volume fairly low, it allows us to just push those one or two sets fairly hard, get a good training stimulus, and then get out while we're still injury free. So next up we have a strength capacity circuit. So we've introduced this circuit into this phase of training. Like we mentioned, yes, it's spring, but this also allows us to help develop the toolbox of exercise that our members follow. So as we get older, we tend to gravitate towards the exercises that we enjoy and we're good at. And ultimately, that bottlenecks our exercise selection. And that not only increases the risk of injury, but just increases the chance of us getting bored in the gym. So by having the circuits in, it allows us to throw in a few more exercises and a few variations that people may or may not have tried. Here, we're going for four rounds, eight reps of each exercise, with the idea being that you just take 10 to 30 seconds to transition between exercises, but you just keep moving. If you happen to be wearing a heart rate monitor, then you want to keep your heart rate between 120 to 145 beats per minute. And finally, we've got the condition aspect of the workout. So in this workout, it's a treadmill run. We've already used up a fair number of exercise selection through our strength capacity circuit. So in this phase, we're keeping the conditioning down to just one modality. And here we've got a quick blast on the treadmill with pacing as targets.
So here in workout B, you can see that our strength component is made up of squat and pull-ups, or pull-downs depending on your own strength levels. And we don't get caught up in what type of squat you need to do. So if you need to use a safety squat bar, then that's fine. If you prefer to front squat, then that's absolutely fine. And you can see that we follow the same set and rep structure as we did in workout A. We move on to a different strength capacity circuit. And what you might notice with all of the circuits is that they're based around using minimal equipment. So the team program is a professional program designed to be used in a commercial environment so there's no point in us giving you a circuit that's based around five different machines that you've got no hope of using during peak times so here it's minimal equipment we introduced dumbbell swings a movement that most people are familiar with with kettlebells but very rarely is it seen with dumbbells but again focus on the movement not the implement and we also throw in some of the rhythmic press-ups and the dumbbell lateral raise And finally in workout C, our strength component is made up of floor press and chest supported rows. So floor press is another great option for anyone with shoulder issues. And you can see here that we've kicked the volume up with four sets of 12 reps. It's the end of the week, everybody wants to get a pump on, everybody wants to feel good. From there we move into another strength capacity circuit, a slightly different setup this time in terms of the exercises, but the format is the same. Four rounds, eight reps of every exercise, 10 to 30 seconds transition between each and try and keep your heart rate between 120 and 145 if you're using a heart rate monitor. Finally, we jump onto the brutal rower. Simple setup again when it comes to the intervals, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, eight times, followed by 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 10 times. And here you can see that we've given you pacing. These are based around data that we've collected over the years working in pro sport and with different clients and athletes and we've come up with sort of averages and targets for you to hit. And there you go, there's an insight into our team program. There's three of the four workouts taken from week 15. Uh, please give them a go, let us know how you get on. And if you're already training, but have little to show for it other than an expanding waistline, or your training has just turned into a tick box exercise, but you can still commit to maybe doing three to four sessions a week, then head over to www.veteran-athlete.com and sign up for our team program. For £2.50 a week, We'll send you a nutrition plan, we'll send you a fresh training program every Sunday and you can start making progress and enjoying your training again.